basketball watch list are officially released. The season is officially underway, and I could not be more excited to see everyone back out on the hardwood. I'm Whitney Hayworth, joined by former Duke head coach and current Kentucky assistant coach, Gail Guestin, of course. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Well, it's my pleasure. Your resume speaks for itself. Seven-time ACC Coach of the Year. You had four trips to the Final Four, two national championship game appearances, just to name a few. But we're here today to talk about the success that you've had winning two Naismith College Coach of the Year awards, one being in 2007, 15 years ago. When you think back to 2007, what comes to mind? Oh, well, I think it's the same thing that comes to mind about every season, and it's really the players, you know, the people, the memories, uh, working together. Um, I know that team in particular, you know, we just found a way almost every game, not every game, but uh, we were very successful. And it was it was really amazing to watch these young women um, remain focused. So it didn't matter the opponent, you know, so many years, you, you don't know if your team's going to be ready to play from one game to the next. I really knew and felt my entire staff felt like every single game, because we had such great leadership from the players, um, that they were going to come to play and they were going to be prepared and focused. And that's, it's really amazing to have that happen day in and day out throughout the course of an entire season. And you're so humble right there. I mean, unprecedented success that year. You go undefeated in the regular season, beating the likes of North Carolina, North Carolina State, Tennessee, who went on to win the national championship game. So to add on to what you just said, I mean, when you're getting wins each and every time, what were you learning about the program's state where it was then, but also what, where, how you were as a head coach at that point? Yeah, I think we had gotten to the point where it was player led. Um, and that's that's every coach's dream. Every coach's goal is to get to the point where you don't have to get on the players um, to play hard, to practice hard every day, that they really police themselves. They take care of themselves. They take care of one another. Um, so if they see that somebody's not giving all that they can, they go and talk to them. So it makes the job of the head coach and the assistant coaches a lot easier when you have that kind of culture built and in place where from year to year to year, they continue, they have the expectations uh, that they are going to be successful and they're going to do what's necessary. When you look back to where the college game was in 2007 to where it is now, how have you seen the women's game evolutionize? Oh my goodness. Uh, so much more skill involved, you know, the bigger, stronger, faster, you know, every, now you've got six, three players is very commonplace uh, that they're playing the one, the two, the three, you know, we have Ryan Howard here um, at Kentucky who can play one through four slots easily uh, and successfully. And um, back in the day, you know, it was Candace Parker was really one of the first uh, big players at Tennessee who could come out and really play all those slots. So now it's more commonplace. Uh, the players are much more skilled. Three point shooting is you almost have everyone on your team now that can hit the three point shot as opposed to a specialist, which is what we used to have. You'd have one or two that would come in and, you know, be able to shoot the three. Now, really, everybody can shoot the three. And you've been lucky to be in this industry for a long time at all different levels, the collegiate, the professional, even in sports broadcasting with ESPN. What has been your biggest lesson or takeaway throughout these years, especially being a coach? Um, that it really is about the player um, and that we're here to teach. Uh, and that I think the, the toughest time for kids is when they're that 18 to 22, you know, we have them at such a precious time for them because they're learning to be away from their family and really become independent young women. So it's a very, it's, it's a huge responsibility. And um, I think, you know, now that I've seen it from so many different angles and, and my lens has been different from with ESPN and then being a consultant and through the pros, just that how important it is to communicate, not just with your players, with your staff, with your fans, with everybody to make sure that your messaging is always the same and that everybody feels needed and important. That's what we all want. We all want to feel needed and important and uh, finding a way to do that. 
Now, obviously, you and I wouldn't be here, or none of us would be here if it wasn't for a gentleman named James Naismith. So when you hear the word or the name Naismith, I mean, what first comes to your mind and how thankful are you for what he did for the game of basketball? What comes to mind is innovator, uh, someone who was creative uh, and, and loved to play. You know, and sometimes we get caught up and we have to win. You know, we, f we forget sometimes that it is a game and it's about playing and enjoying and fun. And um, so that's what comes to mind. Uh, we had the incredible experience when I was at Texas um, that we had his rules actually um, at the University of Texas for a period of time. And just going there and looking and seeing where he scratched things out, he had certain rules that he didn't like and he had scratched a few out and changed a few of the words. And it was like, it, it just made it real. Uh, and. And if he could see what it's evolved to, it would just be amazing. <laughs> now, obviously right now you have landed at the University of Kentucky. I would be remiss if I didn't ask what it means to be a part of Big Blue Nation now. Oh, it's been incredible. You know, I've been very fortunate to be uh, involved in three and really four when I was at Purdue University as an assistant, but schools that are so basketball oriented and being a part of Big Blue Madness, this was my first year and it was just, an amazing experience. People talk about it, but being there uh, and having that experience was was really priceless. Well, Coach, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Congratulations on all the success that you have had in your career, not only at Duke and Texas, but now the success that I know you'll have at Kentucky. And in particular, congratulations on being a two-time recipient of the Naismith College Coach of the Year Award. Thanks so much.